Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Daniel's Security Academy. Today, I brought the question of how do I find the right firewall for my company or for my customers? Because there are plenty of vendors and hardware models available. So where do I start? How do I find the correct one? And I will try to answer this question by um, giving first an introduction about the firewall market. Secondly, find the right vendor. Thirdly, find the right model. And at the end, I will give you a summary, summarizing uh, what we have discussed in the video. Let's jump into the introduction onto the firewall market first. There are many global players on the firewall market, which are around for many, many years already. There's like Checkpoint, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Cisco, Barracuda, Sophos, and so many more vendors, which I cannot name here because there's so many. Um, Each of these vendors is good at something, but not at everything. Some bring the best security in class, um, but at the same time also a huge price tag to it. And some maybe have a smaller price tag to it, but might not bring uh, a well-ranked security test as maybe the others do. Uh, from NSS labs or many of the other security testing um, uh, reports. I personally divide the firewall market into three segments. The first segment is the premium segment, which uh, where you have Palo Alto and Checkpoint, for example. Then you have the, I call it the standard uh, or the mid-size, mid-class uh, segment, which is, uh, for example, Cisco or Juniper. And then you have the economy uh, segment where you will find um, cheaper solutions like Sophos or Barracuda, for example. Let's go now into the question of finding the right vendor. Do I really need a premium vendor is one of the questions you need to ask yourself. Of course, the premium vendor will probably bring the best um, security to you will bring the best um, features to you, maybe even the best ecosystem to you. But are you actually in need of having a premium solution? This is not always true. Of course, the premium solutions will do it better, but do you need this kind of quality for the price tag it brings? Finding the right vendor is usually a very subjective decision. Um, based on your personal experience or market influence. For example, if you have a partner um, which um, has some connections to one of the vendors, they will influence you um, with their knowledge and their partnership. Because those external consultants have uh, already partnerships with specific vendors where they get um, best discounts or uh, they are just focused on this one. So. There you will see a huge market influence. Or as I already mentioned uh, in the first, um, uh, as I already mentioned, is uh, your personal experience. But still, I want to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to determine the right vendor by asking yourself some questions pretty much. First, what are you looking for? Best of breed security or are you just introducing network security to the company? So did you have security uh, features um, and firewalls before and you're looking to improve this one, you might want to go with a more premium solution. But if your company is maybe small or mid-sized company and you didn't have any kind of firewall or um, security features on the network level, you might want to get started with an economy solution or a standard mid-sized solution first. Second question. What is your budget? I know this is a difficult question because usually the budget is small um, and the, the things you want are big. So small budget, but a huge amount of, of features required. But did the company decide to take security seriously or is it just another side project in a project pipeline? So if it's like a focus point of the company or your company, then the budget might be good 
But if it's just, just another side project in the pipeline, the budget is probably just very small. And um, yeah, you will probably not be able to um, allocate a lot of premium um, products here. Thirdly, um, do you or your colleagues already have experience with a vendor due to previous projects or engagements or because you already have some other solutions of a certain vendor um, in the ecosystem? Because if you already have plenty of peer experience, for example, let's say with Fortinet switches and access points, it is a good idea to go also with Fortinet firewall solutions. If you have experience in your past engagements with Cisco firewalls and you want to introduce it now to this new company or uh, one of your customers, then use your Cisco knowledge to do it. But yeah, try to minimize the amount of vendors you have and try to make use of one ecosystem as this will help you to reduce training efforts and increases the integration between those kind of solutions. So try to look at the bigger picture. Are you just looking to re replace um, your firewall or are you also looking to replace your access points and switches? Are you also looking to do some more cloud security strategy? Look at the bigger picture. Where can you also, or where are you going to spend money also on? And if you know, okay, I'm going to replace my access points and switches next year as well. Look at an ecosystem with a firewall, access points, switches uh, in one ecosystem. Um, and if you also want to do cloud security, make sure this, this vendor also has a good sec cloud security solution. Because then you will shrink down the, the vendors you actually have and make it definitely easier to maintain um, the environment and to make the best use out of it. To summarize um, the questions about finding the right vendor is what is the expected security, what is the budget, what is your experience. Those three are the key parts. Let's move over to the finding the right model question. After you have found your go-to vendor, um, either because you have personal experience, uh, personal influence, whatever led you to the decision to make a call on this vendor, um, it is time to do some research to get the best hardware. You could rely on an external consultant, for example, who tells you, okay, this is the best um, uh, hardware. However, this search is not too difficult and you can do it as well. This is not rocket science. Several requirements, just as I gave you the questions for the finding right vendor, I will also give you now uh, five um, requirements or questions um, for finding the right model because those are pretty much the um, facts or the key points where you will make a decision based on. Let's start with first. How many ports are required on the network? and pretty much also what kind of ports are required. Do you need 10G SFP plus ports? Do you need 40G ports? How many copper ports do you need? Do you actually need copper ports? Um, and pretty much the um, required ports will already shrink down your choice pretty heavily, depending on your, on your requirements. Secondly, what is the required bandwidth? So how much bandwidth is this firewall likely to handle? Which security level do you want to apply? Because depending on the security level you want to apply, the bandwidth the firewalls are producing or um, going to throughput um, will be different. So also make sure you are looking at this correct security level for your bandwidth. Is it just firewalling or you want to do full IPS with more web protection and everything on it? Because between those two security levels it will be a huge difference in bandwidth um, the firewall can, can do. Do you want a virtual or a physical firewall? Simple question, but also this one will rule out a lot of uh, firewalls. Fourth, how scalable does it need to be? Do you need to be able to scale it up quickly, um, which 
also maybe relates to the previous question of uh, virtual or network, uh, virtual or uh, physical, because if you need to be very scalable, you might need to, to uh, use virtual firewalls instead of physical uh, firewalls. The fifth um, question is, what is your expected future growth? Do you expect to grow significantly in the next three to five years as a company? If you know, okay, we are going to do acquisitions of companies, we will open new offices, we we'll probably grow by 20% per year. I don't know, maybe 10% per year, 20%, I don't know, whatever, take whatever you want. But if you know you have an expected growth, which is huge, make sure to consider this in your today's decision. But if you know like, okay, our growth is very linear, every year we grow like by 5% in, in bandwidth or traffic, maybe 10%, then it's easier for you to calculate your, uh, your need in five years from now. And based on those informations, you usually be able to drill it down to like two or three models, which are uh, in the correct range from this vendor. And from there, just get some offers from your partners about uh, from or for those two or three models and compare which offers the best price value ratio, which firewall is in the budget range. If all three are in the budget range, maybe um, is the biggest firewall actually required or could we save the money and maybe take the middle one? Or does already the small one uh, work for us? Is none of those in my budget? Maybe I need to change my requirements again or my question. Maybe I need to address um, slower growth rates or be um, alert to only um, have this firewall for the next three years instead of five years because um, I cannot afford um, the entire expected growth for the next five years. Okay, let's get to the summary. Um, finding the right vendor and model is not a difficult task. And if you know some of the parameters, it is easy as you think. And external consultants can help you with their expertise, but be aware about their personal or company bias towards certain vendors due to partnerships. This is an open book. So every uh, consultancy company will have some partnerships with some vendors. So they have a bias towards one of those vendors and might not consult you on the entire open market. Um, so yeah, be aware of this uh, situation. And if you're about to manage the firewalls and environments uh, on your own, make sure you use the given expertise in your team when choosing a vendor. So as I already stressed it out, it doesn't make sense to decide in favor, for example, a Palo Alto firewall if many colleagues have a deep knowledge in Cisco firewalls already, because maybe in your company Cisco firewalls were, were used uh, many years before, or you have a lot of people who come from other companies who used Cisco firewalls. So um, check your expertise level in your team and um, drill it down uh, via their expertise as well. Do not frequently change between vendors. It will only increase the complexity of migration projects and it doesn't allow you to build like a long lasting partnership with a vendor. Um, this is a fact which is often overseen because um, maybe the director of IT changes um, in, in the past and uh, he or she brings in some experience from the past or relationships with a vendor from the past and wants to change the entire ecosystem. But changing the, the ecosystem frequently, maybe let's say every five years you change the ecosystem, it will not give you um, the best results you're gonna look for. Because staying with one vendor for a longer period will help you to build a um, long lasting partnership with the vendor, build up trust, and also build up um, knowledge and mind. Try to minimize the amount of vendors in your network and security realm to reduce the complexity. I've stressed this out uh, pretty often right now already. So 
Um, this is a trend we have seen in the past two, three years. Uh, one of the top trending topics of uh, CISO um, and security leading uh, people is to reduce the amount of vendors to um, make the integration and the ecosystems work better together. And lastly, it is always a good measure to base other security products on the chosen vendor and technology from the firewall space. So of course, I have a network bias. So I believe that some decisions, for example, around maybe endpoint security or cloud security should be based on the products we use in the network realm. And if you ask someone who is managing endpoint security, they would probably give you just the other way around. They would say like, okay, use the endpoint or uh, use a cloud security um, solution from this vendor because we already use it as the endpoint security. So you will hear different opinions about this topic for sure, depending on who you ask. But me, as a network security focused guy, of course, I believe um, if you pick a vendor for your security strategy, which is based on the vendor you already have in your network realm, you will be um, very good off because you can create so much synergy between those solutions and probably save a lot of money because you can integrate everything into one ecosystem. That's it already for today's session again. Um, I'm thanking you again for uh, watching till the end and um, I hope to see some comments from you um, about maybe your approach as a consultant to finding the right firewall solutions. Maybe you as a customer um, already or as an enterprise um, internal consultant uh, how you approach this kind of situation and yeah let me know if you need um, any more input from me if you want more advices and um, I'm happy to help. So stay safe and see you soon. Bye-bye.